Right, oh legends, now that we are in summer, although it doesn't feel like it with all the rain and the wind we're currently having, I wanted to have a little bit of a chat about snapper fishing. Um, I'm going to talk about the exact gear I use and also um, I'll put in some sounder screenshots at the end and show you what I'm looking for before I start fishing. So when I'm out on the boat, I've typically got two different setups. Both of the rods are from the 22 TD0 range. So Got the seven foot four, three to eight kilo. And the real I run on that one is the Saltus MQ 3000. Um, these setups get an absolute flogging because they spend a lot of time in the boat. And I can tell you that this reel is holding up really well. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I've had it ever since they first got released. And yeah, can't talk about it highly enough. Okay, so my second setup, again, 22 TD0. This one is slightly heavier and slightly longer, so 7'6 and 6 to 12 kilos. Can cast a little bit further, but I'll still use both setups, exact same lures, exact same leader and braid. Uh, basically carry two because, you know, you bust one off, you don't want to be mucking around. Um, Rigging another rod, you just sort of grab the second rod and you're straight back into it. I've got a slightly larger reel, so this reel is a 4000 head, head LT. Um, sort of a bit more of your budget friendly reel. I think they're only 100 bucks or 110 bucks, something like that. But in all honesty, it's fine. It's fine for what I'm doing. Um, it's holding up really well. Can't really fold it. So, yeah, if you want a budget reel, that's a good start. We need line on our reels. J Braid Grand, I run it on both. Uh, I use 12 pound on the 3000, 15 pound on the 4000. I like the J Braid Grand, I like the blue colour as well. You can't really fold it, you can see it quite well in the water, which is always handy. And yeah, not strength. Pretty bloody good. With leader, I will run anywhere from sort of 12 pound um, to sort of 16, depending on the conditions. Uh, if I'm struggling to get bites, I will even go down to 10 pound. But yeah, that's only if I'm really struggling and I'm seeing fish on the sounder, just not get the bites. So that's when I'll go down to 10. But J3 FC and the new Crosslink, um, J3 Crosslink. Both good, love them both. Uh, cross length, bit smaller diameter, and probably a little bit better on the knot strength, but all round, they are both pretty good. Braid to lead a knot, tie an FG knot. There's no point tying anything else. The FG knot's got a very small diameter, it'll go through the guides. Breaking strain is greatly improved with an FG knot, so if you don't know how to tie it, watch a YouTube video, Sit down and tie it five, ten times, and you'll know how to do it for life. Uh, it's definitely worth learning. I mainly fish plastics for snapper, so I've got some bait junkie jig heads here. I will use anywhere from sort of half ounce, quarter ounce, three eight. Just depends on the conditions. If it's glass calm, no drift, I'll go as light as possible. Um, if there's a fair bit of drift or a fair bit of wind, I'll go to that half ounce. And that's only in like 10 metres of water. I just snap a love eating on the drop and I've found they will eat the lighter jig head. Uh, more often, if conditions are tough, if it's glass out, you know, if you're struggling to get bites, go lighter. Okay, soft plastic selection. So everyone should know the white bait junkie packets by now. Um, these are the two that I mainly fish. So. I've got the 4.2 inch minnow, uh, I like the minnow, it's got the big paddle tail and fish love eating it on the drop, like you'll jig it up and as it's dropping back down that tail will be swimming and fish will just crunch it and you'll feel like the tick in the line as if a brim was eating it and you'll just send the hooks in, you'll be on. The other plastic is the 5 inch jerk shad, so typical jerk shad I guess, uh, it sort of swims really well if you just want it slow it'll swim like a fish <laughs> uh pretty simple like i bounce these off the bottom let it hit the bottom bounce it up let it hit the bottom bounce it up 
and the fish will more often than not grab these as I'm actually twitching it off the bottom. Like as soon as they go to see it move again, they'll pounce on it. I typically go the minnow a little bit more if things are tough, but starting out for the day, I'll have both tied on and just see which one they like. As far as colors go, um, pinks, blues, whites, I've even called them on black and gold. I, some days they prefer some darker colors over lighter colors, other days they prefer the lighter colors over the darker colors. I don't really know why, to be honest with you, but I'll just sort of sift through them till I notice one's getting eaten more than the other, and that's the one I'll stick with for the day. Almost forgot. This is the last thing I want to talk about with lures, and that's the Steez Softshell Vibe. So, I haven't had much of a chance to use these too much yet, but one thing I've noticed, where I fish, the snapper are always full of crabs. Like, if I keep one to eat, full of crabs. So, little sort of Softshell Vibe imitates any sort of crustacean. These should be absolutely electric, really. So. They are going to get an absolute hammering as soon as this weather finds up. And I'm sure you'll see me posting about them a lot. Alright, I've just moved locations so I can look at my sound images while I'm talking to you. So everything I'm saying actually makes sense. Uh, first off, the bottom I like fishing is pretty subtle. Like it's shallow, 14 to 6 sort of metres, uh, shaly, shelly type bottom. No major reefs because... Down here in Tassie, they just hold too many reef fish and they're just really annoying. So that's the main reason I'll fish that bottom. And as bycatch, I'll catch flathead more than anything else. Um, occasional gurnet, which are heaps of fun on light gear as well. So just looking at shot number one here, you can see um, on the side scan image on the right hand side, going over some light rubbery bottom there. Um, I'll fish over the top of that a lot, but I'll also fish right around it, over the sand. You can see some fish on the 2D on the left hand side there. I mean, yeah, 13 metres of water. More often than not, I'll hook the fish over the sand. They just like to have something around them. I guess it's a bit of a food source for one and two, it's a little bit of cover. 12.2 metres of water, you can see on the side image. That's a pretty much a sandy bottom, like there's a bit of shell grit mixed throughout it. But you can see again, fish on the left hand side. If I go over fish like that on the sounder, I'll go past them 50, 80 meters and then drift back towards them while casting in front of the boat and you'll generally pick them up. If we go to the last shot, we're in 12 meters of water here and you can just see there's a bit of, bit of a ledge more than anything. So there's a bit of rubble and then it's just a bit of a ledge and there's fish holding on top of that ledge. Not right on the drop off, but like just on top of the ledge. It doesn't drop off much, probably like half a metre. But that, again, that's enough to hold the fish. Um, if you see a bottom like that, it's worth pulling up and having a cast, even if you don't see fish on the sounder. You're not gonna know if you don't try and you don't always see them on the sounder. Like, I've done circles in the boat for half an hour and not come across a fish and then within 10 minutes of fishing I'm hooked up to a snapper so they move around you won't just see them in the one spot like they'll get out over the sand and travel feeding along all the crabs and other fish and squid and that sort of thing so they definitely move around quite a bit all right that's all I've got for you guys my throat is sore from talking so much it's not often I talk this much in this short amount of time but I hope you can take something away from this video and send me some photos of your fish